Hello and welcome to Facebook Live on Thursday evening. It's eight o'clock and uh, it's been a while so I thought it'd be good to have a Facebook Live. Um, lots of things have been getting in the way so I'm really sorry because it has been longer than I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna put my glasses on now because I want to be able to read who's watching. So hi Philippa, hi Sue, hi Annie, hi Elaine, hi Joe. Trying to see else who else I recognise. Pictures why hello Elizabeth, hello Anne, hi Sue, hi Julie. Oh it's little Julie. <laughs> oh excellent. Brilliant. Right so thank you for joining me. Um, on this cold and it's a bit wet here as well and I had the most horrible walk down the garden it's pitch black I really should turn you around so you can see how black it is out there so I came down the garden with a torch so that I didn't wear my phone out and I stopped <laughs> and a frog jumped on my foot <laughs> and I screamed and well I, something touched my foot I didn't know what it was at the time turn the torch on to the to find out it was a frog fortunately because I didn't think it was to start with um, and then I turned the torch round and there's two more great big fat toads sitting there looking at me as well so I screamed and I did say some naughty words <laughs> and I got in my shed quick <laughs> I just hope they didn't jump in here as well so yeah that's a bit like oh <laughs> so not a good way to start anyway so um so just thank you for joining me I'm going to show you a little trick with the stamping press which I do think is absolutely brilliant um, can you all hear me all right actually you must be because you're all laughing at me so you must be able to hear me um, yes yeah, so I'm going to show you a little trick with the stamping platform um, I just think it's an absolute game changer it certainly has been for me even though I've been stamping all these years um, I still use it every single day when I stamp and it just means that my stamping is perfect. So whichever um, stamp, whether you've got a stamping press, a stamp platform, whatever, it really is a game changer. And you will be able to do this trick with whichever one you have um, that you're using. So, hi Paula. Right, I'm going to flip the camera over and uh, just show you the cards I'm going to make. And uh, yeah just start to go through things if you've got any questions then ask away um, I will try and answer them if I see them but it's really hard when I'm demoing and trying to look at the screen so if not I will answer them afterwards so let me switch the camera around bear with yeah Annie I expect you do love frogs but I expect you have them with white wine and garlic don't you over there and I don't like them jumping on my feet it was horrible <laughs> <laughs> hi Jill okay so these are the cards that this is the one of the cards I'm not going to make exactly the same one as this one you could do this one um, once you know how to do the little trick and it's so easy hi Maxine and I'm really sorry if I'm not saying hello to everybody um, just names keep popping up so um, yeah so this is one of the cards that I made this is a more elaborate one but you can do this quite easily this probably took me oh 10 minutes tops this afternoon because it's such a clever trick um, and the other one that I made as well because I wanted to do an everyday one not just a Christmas one so this is from my heartfelt wishes stamp set and I will show you the set so it's from this one but it's just using this little flower here and I used it one way to start with and then I turned it around oh no I kept it the same because I wanted to have a leaf and a flower so I did do it all the same way but you could actually turn it around and have it going different ways so it's just using this little flower here so it just shows you what a beautiful circle of flowers like a wreath that you can make um, just with that one tiny little stamp which I think is fab so let's get on to what I'm going to show you okay so you obviously have to have and I apologize about all the lights because I want you to have, be able to see but obviously it's not very nice so we'll try and put it there so that's a bit better you need a stamping platform to be able to do this okay so I am going to put I have cut a piece of card and this is um, this layers up to go on my six by six card <coughs> excuse me so it's about 14 centimeters square I think 
Oh, sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to use my Snowflake um, stamps and I'm going to use this little one here. So this is, I'll show you on the, sorry. I'm going to use this one here. So it's quite a simple looking one, but it gives a really nice effect. So I'm going to try and move the camera up a little bit because I want you to be able to see. I want you to, be able to see the measurements. So you can see up here that it says it's almost 14 centimeters. So that means that it's almost seven will be in the half. So I'm going to line my stamp up towards the top of my piece of card, but lining it up with that seven centimeters. And if you have another ruler, you can make sure that the stat. If you want to be that precise, but I I didn't do this earlier. It's all by eye. Um, but you could if you wanted to if you were really wanted it to be dead dead straight you could make sure that the top and bottom of your patterns line up okay so we have that in our stamping platform and I'm going to shut the door pick my stamp up so if you don't have a stamp press already um, I particularly like this one because I think for the price point which is $21.99 over on Crafts You Love website. I think for that price point, it is absolutely brilliant. You can actually get um, an A4 piece of card in this stamping press because you have no limits. You can't see, sorry, because I've moved. There's a little bit at the bottom here. Hang on. There is a little bit here that is the only limiting factor, but you can actually get an A4 piece of card that way in your stamping press so you can do really big stamps if you really wanted to it also has a really nice dense foam that i find really good when you're stamping that gives you that lovely lovely impression if you have cling stamps you simply take out that black mat and then you use the base here to stamp on and then you can use your cling stamps as well but if you're just using polymer like the normal polymer stamps then use the dense foam because it gives you a lovely impression Right, so I'm going to ink up my stamp. So I'm using Mermaid Lagoon, a distressed oxide, which wouldn't normally, or with distress inks, I definitely did not ever stamp with them because I, they're, they're not particularly, they're brilliant for blending, but I always found that they gave me really feathery looks to my inking. But with the distressed oxides, they're absolutely beautiful to stamp with. So I've actually been doing that a little bit more now. Okay, so once we've done our first one, I'm going to move my magnets out of the way and I'm going to turn my card round and I'm going to, so they've got, the stamp now is at nine o'clock, so it's like a clock and I'm going to stamp, ink the stamp up again and I can stamp my stamp out. So I get a nice impression. Now, if that doesn't come out very nicely, you just put more ink on if you need to and then stamp it again. That is the beauty of the stamping platform. You will never ever, well, I won't say you won't ever, very unlikely to get bad stamping. So if you're not confident in stamping, but you would really like to be, invest $21.99 and you will never look back. It is absolutely brilliant. Now I'm gonna do that just a little bit more because I've got a little bit of my snowflake here that wasn't quite as dark as the other bits. I can go back in and now I've got perfect impression all round. So just keep turning that around each time. Just move it quarter turn and you'll have your 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock all done. So really nice and easy to do. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the piece of cellophane that comes as a backing on my, my stamps and I'm going to place it down on top of my work because I want to now place my snowflake here and I don't have to clean my stamp so my stamp's still dirty but because I've put the acetate down I can position my stamp exactly where I want it to be and I can actually line up the little bits on my snowflake so it should get in the right place should fit in there perfectly. So then I can shut my platform, take my piece of acetate out, ink my stamp up again, and then I shut my platform and it's gonna stamp the bits that go in between for me. Okay, so you don't do anything to your stamp, so it's perfect in the middle. Turn it around. Didn't put a magnet in to hold it in place, but never mind. 
ink your stamp again and then you stamp the next one so now you're building up that circle of design so you can do it obviously looks lovely with snowflakes it looks really good with flowers as well it would make a perfect wreath for a Christmas card as well so you just keep going round and round one more stamp and then you've got that circle of snowflakes now if you want to add additional snowflakes you can so we can go in and we can add extra detail like I did on my blue snowflake card you the only thing I would say is if you use distress oxides just be a bit careful because the inks take a little bit longer to dry so be careful that you don't smudge anything I mean I can see in the light here if you can pick that up on the camera this one here is is quite wet and so if I was going to put the piece of acetate down and line up another stamp at the moment that would could easily get smudged so what I could do is I could use my gorgeous new wow embossing tool my dual speed heat embossing tool and I could dry this now and because I've got two speeds I can dry it really quickly so just bear with one second so it's, it's not particularly noisy it is super fast and it is, the direction on it is it heats exactly on where the nozzle is we actually did a test on the old heat tool and the new heat tool and the old heat tool you could see how the heat was dispersed but with this it's got so directional and so fast it is just brilliant i love it and uh, these are on wow's website if you do want one if you're looking for a new heat tool i can honestly highly recommend it um like i say where you heat is where the emboss when you're doing your embossing especially that is where your heat is and i will do some embossing in a second and you'll absolutely see um, it's 21 pounds 60 from wow but if you add a little code when you get to the checkout um, you can actually get 10% off if I give you a code for my um, DT so it's I'll, I'll put the code in afterwards but it's actually wow DT JH and a capital I and that will give you 10% off anything from wow and if you tick the little box that says you heard about it from Julie then I'd really appreciate that too so if you are looking for a new heat tool highly recommend this one it is fab so I've now dried all this so this is all ready to go we can do some more stamping so I'm just going to put the magnets down and I would always with my heat tool try and heat heat it up a little bit before you go to your um, stamping because that will actually stop it warping quite as much now I'm going to place a couple of little stamps so I'm going to place one snowflake towards the top and one snowflake at the bottom take my one off that I was using before I won't worry about cleaning it now I'll do that later and I'll shut my door and pick those two stamps up and this time we'll use a different color ink pad so I'm using this one is blueprint sketch and now when I shut the door I can just press very gently because they're they're little stamps so you don't want to push too hard with these ones but obviously with your platform that gives you it does really help with things like that so to do it one turn again put the magnets on to hold it gentle tap with my ink pad and then stamp again and just keep doing that going round one turn at a time and then we will go back in and put some snowflakes on the other side so you can build up the patterns you could put the little snowflake in the center of the big snowflake if you wanted to but it's literally four stamps and you've done half of your wreath so another four so eight stamps in total and the whole thing is done which i think is absolutely brilliant this is my um, snowflake stamp set which is available from crafts you love so this is the christmas one if anybody wants to treat themselves to this so that's over on crafts you love website I'll put some links into the video at the end when I finish. And because Crafty Love have also got a fantastic offer. Sorry, I'm not heating it, I can't be am I? Sorry. Um, Crafty Love have got a fantastic offer on the, the Distressed Oxide, the next set. So the final set of Tim's Distressed Oxides 
they have a, a great pre-order offer on if you want to do that as well which I've placed mine I need those last two last 12 I mean just to complete the set so now I can put the piece of acetate back in and place my little stamps where I want them to be underneath just stand up to make sure I'm getting that underneath yep yeah. and then I can shut the door remove that piece of acetate so again it's protected my work so I haven't had to clean my stamps it means you can just carry on which is I think wonderful and then when we stamp it here we've got some snowflakes on this side now and again you just turn your card one quarter turn and keep going so just four more times and then you'll have your complete circle of snowflakes on both sides you could emboss these which would look beautiful as well so you could have some sparkly embossing perhaps which would be really lovely but i'm actually going to do a little bit going to stamp my um sentiment onto vellum and use a sparkly embossing powder for that so again just going around the edge again beware because the, the ink is wet like that we're just putting on now so when you're going to stamp again like your sentiment i would just give this a blast each time so that you don't smudge your ink okay just keep this and dry all those snowflakes there we go Right, so that's ready. So I'll just take the little snowflakes out because I want to stamp my vellum sentiment. I'll just get rid of those for now and I will clean them later, she says. No, I will. And I will show you actually that I'm very good. I clean them now just with water. I find it's much better. No more baby wipes on them. It works so much better. Okay, so I have a strip of vellum that I've pre-cut. I'm going to pop that in my platform then I'm going to take one of the beautiful sentiments that we've got from the stamp set so I think we will have well we've got may your Christmas shine bright sparkle and shine this Christmas time let's have that one I like that okay so we can place that down on the top of our piece of vellum just lining it up again we'll close the platform pick our stamp up so that's now stuck vellum has a habit of sticking to the stamp so you do need to make sure that you just make sure it's back in the right place wipe with an anti-static bag because you're embossing and you should get in the habit of using that all the time and then i'm using the wow embossing pad this is ultra slow drying and it really is we did a test or marion did she tested it and you can stamp it and leave it for 48 hours and it will still emboss after all that time which i think is pretty amazing so i've got my vellum and i'm just going to sprinkle some silver sparkle embossing powder over the top do you know what i get a really lovely feeling every time i sprinkle the embossing powder on and i see that beautiful sentiment like that and it's like they're my stamps <laughs> how cool is that okay so i'm going to take my heat tool now this time i'm going to use it on the number one setting and i'm going to let it heat up a little bit before i actually bring the heat tool in to the to the vellum and actually start heating because if you do that you will actually um stop the warping happening to the vellum and also to your cardstock as well so I now take it bring the heat tool in and you will see I need to get it in the right light for me so I can see it sorry wherever it's going there we go that's it that's it done so we have that lovely silver sparkle embossing let me bring the light back up a little bit and might be able to get the sparkle in there can you see that's beautiful okay so we've moved my platform out of the way now I wanted to show you something that I tend to do with vellum now when you put this over a background and if I get my original card you'll be able to see so when I put this on on my card you can see it but if you do 
and if you glue two pieces of vellum together and then put them on your card the difference is just incredible it makes it so much better to be able to see the sentiment through that background that you've got and when I put um, vellum on and I did notice that Amanda was watching so she will see what fabulous glue I'm using so when I'm joining my vellum together if only I get it to come out now this is my fault because I left the nozzle off open okay so if you have a bottle of glue you have to have a roll of wire and then that will unblock it okay so just a little squeeze right so you need the tiniest tiniest little bit of glue and I put it behind where there is embossing okay that that is almost too much there all right so you need a tiny tiny amount so I'm going to pop this down on top of my other piece of vellum and what I'm doing is although it's still onto vellum it's making it thicker so now when I place that down on top of my snowflakes you're able to read the sentiment a lot better because you've got that double piece of vellum so I will just trim the ends I'm going to cut a little piece off first of all trim it down in size and then I'm going to snip up into the vellum to start with and then snip either side that way it's much easier to get a nice banner shape so again snip the end off of there and then we will snip into the vellum and then snip either side it just makes it much much easier and then I would place this down on the top of my sentiment and even though it's busy I mean you could have it up here you can still read the sentiment because you've got that double thickness of vellum but you can still see through the vellum and see that lovely pattern underneath so it, I really do think that that second layer of vellum helps I think that would look much better on there if it was the two layers rather than the one and you can really see the difference there so that was what I would put on here again I would just use a little bit of glue so a little bit of glue where I've got it before, behind my sentiments. Do like to turn the edges up a little bit. And I would just layer this down, work out where I want it to go. And then I just literally inked around the edges. So um, let's pull out the dark colour this time. So I put a little bit of the dark blueprint sketch down. In fact, way too much. You don't need anywhere near that much. And I've got my blending tool and I'm just taking most of it off because there's way too much on there. And then I'm just going to come in very gently with the blending tool and just colour the edge. So that then when you put this down on a card blank, it's really going to lift it off your card because you've got that lovely border to it. So again, just pick up a little bit of the colour, take most of it off. And I'm using my lovely glass media mat which I really do love working on and the black it's lovely it is just beauty it is a thing of beauty I think and I love the um the oh the craft sheet and the white area that you get as well for mixing inks especially when you're watercoloring that's absolutely fabulous I love that it's white and the fact that they give you the craft sheet which makes it perfect to do inky backgrounds I've actually turned my um mat round I'll show you in a second in fact I'll show you at the end because I can lift the camera off and show you properly and the reason I've done it is because I'm left-handed and I was finding it really awkward blending on this side of the mat where it's much better because I would work on the left so I've actually and it was listening to Leone this morning or yesterday on television when she was saying because she's left-handed and she's got a glass mat now and she was saying that she's turned it around it was like oh what a brilliant idea that it just solves everything so if you're left-handed turn it around and it makes it so much better okay so I've got my ink around the edge there and then when I put this down on a card blank can you see how that border is really going to lift that off the card even if I just put that down flat it's going to give me that lovely border around the edge and that pop of colour is just really going to show everything off beautifully so I'm not going to finish that off because I just wanted to really show you the card again so I'm going to clear up my, bear with me a second, let me just move this out of the way. 
and get my stamps out of the way. And I just wanted to show you the flower one as well that I've done. I just need to put my embossing powder back in my tub before I lose it all. And I wouldn't want to do that. So I do love my embossing powders. Right, so let's put the lid on there. Get rid of that. And I'm just going to have a little clear up, which this is the other thing that is so nice about the glass mat. So all I'm going to do is a bit of water and take a microfiber cloth and it will be all clean because you don't want to be working on the glass mat with all that ink on it. I don't want to get that on the back of my second card. So clean that all off. Beautiful. OK, so I'm going to bring my platform back. Make sure that's lined up so you can see it nicely. Take out my sentiment and I wanted to show you with the flower. So I have another piece of card. So I've cut it again. This is about 14 by 14. So it's going to fit beautifully onto the front of a six by six card. And I'm going to take the flower from Heartfelt Wishes. Again, this is available from Crafts You Love on the website. So again, I'm going to line up with the seven centimetres, so just under seven centimetres, and I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So you have to think, mm, yeah, about there. So I would leave about a centimetre from the top, and then you'll be fine. And I'm going to pick that up, and then I'm going to take my black ink pad. Now, spending time with Hazel, she's got me onto a versifying. I was always a, hang on, I was always a black memento girl. Now, memento is great if you're using alcohol markers. This is perfect because this is a permanent ink pad. However, because I do lots of watercolouring with my Distressed Oxides, the Versafine is a much better ink pad to use. And thanks to Hazel, I'm now converted. And this is a brand new pad. Now, I know that, well, you'll get this because you're crafters. But I actually really think that the lid is just brilliant. I know that's a bit sad, but it doesn't come off. It just flips round, but it gives you much better area to hold on to when you're inking. Whenever I inked up with my memento, I get black lines all over my fingers and end up getting them on my card. But because this has got the hinge lid, you don't actually touch it. And it's just been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. haven't had any accidents with black marks on my cards at all since I got it. So highly recommend the Versafine and it is Onyx Black. So just tap in very lightly on my flower because it's a brand new pad. It is very juicy. OK, so I've inked up my stamp, bring my platform over and close it. Now, I don't have to worry about this. If any, anyone who hasn't got a stamping platform, this is another reason why they are so brilliant. If you get any ink on here, it's not going to come out on your card because your stamp obviously hits your card first. So you don't even have to worry about those sort of things. And look how beautiful that has stamped. Now that would be, once I dry, I would always blitz it with, a, with the heat tool to dry it. Um, but that will be dry and then I can watercolour. So I can add water to it and it's not going to bleed. Whereas with the memento sometimes, if I went a bit quick then the, the ink pad would bleed. So again, I'm just tapping very gently with my ink pad, close the door and then push down and you'll get another beautiful image. Absolutely perfect. So I have to thank Hazel for putting on me onto the Versafine. It's absolutely fabulous. Um, if you do get a stamping platform and you haven't had one before, then I would highly recommend putting washi tape. And this was something I saw Paula um, tell me to do years well ages ago when she first got hers put this the washi tape on here it just makes it much easier to pick the magnets up because they are really strong and the other thing I do as well is I put it on my door as well so it makes it easy to open and shut the door on the press okay so I'm going to turn it round one more time so we're getting again ink in my stamp up so very gently with my versa fine because it's so new and nice and juicy okay we can shut the door and just push down very gently and then one more and then we'll have the start of our circle so we'll have our 12 o'clock three o'clock six o'clock and nine o'clock all done 
Right, and then I'm going to do my trick again with the piece of acetate from the stamp set. Let's get a clean one because I picked up the snowflake one. Right, okay, so I'm going to put that down over my work and then I can pick my stamp off the platform door and I can place it down on the on the piece of acetate. Now I don't need to touch it again now. I can actually move the acetate around until I'm happy with where it's positioned. And when I'm happy with where it's positioned, you shut the door, pick the stamp up, and remember to take the, the piece of acetate off and remember to make sure you've got it up the right way. I actually write top on my bits of acetate now so that I know. Then I'm going to ink my flower up again very gently and again I'm going to stamp this out and now that's fitted in between the two pieces perfectly so when I turn this around just one a quarter turn in the platform again ink it up again and you're going to create that beautiful circle of flowers and that's exactly what I did for the card I showed you at the very beginning which I then coloured with my distressed oxides and a water brush and added some glitter glue to it as well and I also I'll show you the bit that I show you the embossing bit that I did as well so because that's something a bit different and and really quite a nice way to finish off the card so for my last one just stamp that and how beautiful does that look so just by placing the stamp in two different positions you get that perfect wreath literally isn't that fab so mrs cox you need to get that stamping platform out and you need to start using it not just letting me and joe use it <laughs> i want to see lots of wreaths done <laughs> okay so i'm cleaning my stamp up and taking that off and I'm going to, I was going to show you the embossing, wasn't I? Okay, so let's get my ink pad out of the way. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a quick blast again, again with the lovely heat tool. And I'm going to do this on number two, so it'll be really speedy to do. And I'm just doing that because I don't want to smudge any of the ink. And also, the ink stays wet for a little while, so I don't actually want the embossing powder to stick to it when I do my embossing. Okay, so I'm going to place this back in my press and I'm going to stamp in the middle to start with. So I'm going to hold it all the way down because obviously it does warp a little bit um, when you do heat emboss. Right, sorry, I'm just trying to find. There we go. I need a happy birthday card for tomorrow. So... I'm going to put happy birthday on this one okay so we've got that lovely area across the middle that fits in perfectly so place that where I want it shut the door to pick it up use my magic bag to make sure my powder doesn't stick where I don't want it to I will ink my sentiment and then I need shut the door and stamp that out And then I'm going to use my all-time favourite embossing powder. So let's move this out of the way. So I take my piece of card that's going to catch my embossing powder. And I've got my all-time favourite, which is platinum. I just love this platinum embossing powder. It really is. It's my all-time favourite. It's, it's a really lovely, soft, silvery gold and it depends what colour you put with it as to whether it goes more silver or whether it is more gold. Okay, so what's happened is I didn't dry it enough and my embossing powder has stuck to my design where I don't want it to stick. So before I heat it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush all the flowers can you see all that powder coming off and i don't want that to be on my card when i heat it so if for any reason your 
flowers are not completely dry before you put your powder on it might stick so look at all that powder that's can you see that look at all that that would have come out that would have embossed which wouldn't have it would have just made a nice embossed flower but it would have been patchy so a good tap to get the excess off so that is now ready to be heated up so i'm going to put the heat tool on the double setting the, the second setting let it heat up a little bit before i bring it in and then i'm going to bring it in and this just embosses so quickly it was actually seven seconds quicker than the old embossing heat tool which i think is amazing so and then just look at that how beautiful is that so if you use cool colors with this it gives you um a silvery tinge and if you go with warm colors then it, it brings out the gold that's in the embossing as well so then what i'm going to do i'm going to show you the card so around the edge of my card i rubbed my embossing ink pad and i then sprinkled it with the embossing powder and it gives you this lovely irregular edge to it so that's just another nice way of doing instead of layering something you can actually add that little bit of detail with the embossing but just using the ink pad directly onto the piece of card so we'll take the embossing ink pad and i'm literally just going to drag it over the edge of my card and then i'm going to take it left my embossing powder on my piece of card and i'm just literally going to work it until it is all covered down that one edge okay so it's nice and irregular it's not nice and smooth which is exactly how i want it to be again i'll do this on number two and i'll let the heat gun heat up a little bit before i go to my card now if you did this from underneath you would get a really lovely smooth finish but i actually like if you do it from the top you get like little bobbly bits and i actually like that because it adds that little bit more texture to it so if you're doing something around the edge, I would actually heat from the top. If you heat from the underneath, you get a much nicer, smoother finish. But so can you see the little, the textury bits in there? So it just adds something different to the edge of your card. So again, just with my embossing ink pad. So again, just wiping it down the edge of my card, making sure I've covered everything. And then let's have a bit more embossing powder. Just tipping the edge of the card into that embossing, tipping the excess off, and then we'll bring our heat tool in again. <coughs> again, heat it up until it's red, till it's warmed up a little bit before you go to your card. And then you just need to be careful of where you've got the embossing already done. But because this is so directional, and where you're actually pointing the gun is where the heat is coming out, it's actually quite difficult to burn where you've already embossed so that's another benefit from this fabulous new heat tool okay i'm making a bit of a mess with my embossing powder and i'm nearly out of platinum okay so again just rubbing the edge and then tipping my card into it making sure everything is covered my gun up and then heat just down that edge I wish I could capture in the light it actually goes it is just it's still after all these years it still is the real magic thing for me it really is I don't think you can beat a bit of heat embossing okay and then again along the last edge Let's tip this back into the middle a little bit. Put that lovely embossing. Now, if you get too much, like I've got here, this to me is a little bit too far out and too much. So just take a dry brush and just knock it back. And you can still have that lovely ir irregular edge to it. So you've still got that lovely bit of texture and everything. But you can decide how much of that embossing you actually want to show. So just heat along the edge. That's it. As quick as that and as simple as that, 
but just how effective does that look now with that edge that lovely embossed edge to our card absolutely beautiful I just I love platinum I really do I just think it's <clears throat> it's probably my go-to color now I don't use gold or silver very much I just use the platinum so once I've colored it how pretty does that look now this I used um, forest moss and mowed lawn together to get my green don't be afraid to mix your colors this is something that I don't think we do enough so I mix the greens together to give me a different shade and all the all the distress oxides will blend beautifully together to do that and then each of the flowers I colored with carved pumpkin ripe persimmon and abandoned coral so different colors again mixing and matching them to bring those colors up so it gives you a really lovely well just a bit of a different look and because you're mixing the colors you're going to get different colors every single time so I hope you enjoyed that I hope you enjoyed the little trick of being able to do those circle wreaths just by putting your stamp in your stamping platform turning it a quarter turn each time and then overlapping and layering your second um, lot of four so you do 12 3 6 and 9 and then you go back in between them afterwards so just by moving that stamp once it means you can complete that beautiful circle of flowers or snowflakes whatever you want to so right let me swing you round oh and I'm going to show you my like let me take you out of the holder you might jump about a bit okay so can you see how I've got my mat upside down my writing's obviously up the wrong way but this means that I've got this area here to my left which for me as a left-handed person is just so much better and I really have to thank Leone for pointing that out it was such a brilliant brilliant idea so thank you for joining me hope you've enjoyed it and I do promise that I will come back and do lots more Facebook live soon and any questions or comments or anything I will go and have a look now and answer them and then I will share this on um, my Julie Hickey Designs page and also later on YouTube so thanks very much and have a lovely weekend. Bye.